Okay, welcome on my first painting tutorial. Uh, this one is going to be about the image uh, called Sliced. I'm happy to share this with you. It's going to go over design process from thumbnail stage all the way to finished painting. This, this image took a total of, uh, I think, two evenings, uh, excluding the thumbnail design pass. So let's take a look on how we got to this. All right. So first of all, I want to show you different passes that I've done uh, before I even started painting. Uh, I'll show you a couple of thumbnails. These were extremely rough. I was doing these like probably before going to sleep. Uh, you know, like kind of a little scribble. And as you can see, the, the pose is not really great. There's a lot of tangents. The, the framing is, is problematic. Um, but the energy and the overall concept, the overall idea is there. So if you continue, you'll see like this is me trying to uh, clarify the paths of energy and leading the eye into the composition. In this case, we're looking at a uh, kind of like a diagonal composition that leads your eye in. Um, the, the character sword is going to flip and the eye is going to lead from top to bottom rather than coming in towards the left to the right and then upwards. Uh, you'll see that later. So this is just me trying some other poses and uh, trying to clean that up. And at this point, I think I realized I needed some photo reference. Uh, using the golden ratio to, uh, to help with proportions. Here I've tweaked different framing, how big the characters are. I've played a lot with that. So let's go in there and see what I have in that Photoshop file. So yeah, let's see. So yeah, rough sketches. As you can see, like the, the character at first was just going to be heavy and bulky. Then it was like, okay, maybe he should be shooting. So he's like, he's got a gun on one hand. Maybe he's got an open claw on the other one. At the same time, I wanted to be a little retrieving, so it's like he's being attacked. So maybe his his left arm would be a cannon, and his right arm would be an open hand in this sketch. Uh, so just trying different poses, trying different angles, seeing what works, what doesn't. Uh, then I, I started changing that up to uh, help push the eye in and try to exaggerate on the blue sketch here. And what I'll do often is I'll just, I'll drop a white page on top because I like what's there, but I need to push it, or I don't like what's there and I need to rework it. Either way, like I drop white pages and just sketch on top. And as you can see here, I'll try like a bunch of different poses. And uh, most of the time it's, it's, it's okay, but it's not quite there, or it's just straight out terrible. Um, and so I kind of like the arc that this one was doing. So, so it brought your eye in and then brought it down. Um, I do like this. Uh, oh yeah, let's talk about the lines of energy. So in this blue sketch, um, what I'm trying to do is, is have this diagonal composition. So I want the eye to push in, like this is like an arrow. This is like a curved arrow, curved arrow, straight hard. I want that nose. The nose of this character is going to be like Kind of like my, uh, my Ducati has that really pointy hornet nose and uh, the contrast between this very hard mechanical object next to a more organic object will help us make distinctions and uh, it will emphasize how crazy this guy is for just jumping in and uh, attacking this because it's, it's obviously not a fair match and that's what makes images epic. So after struggling with uh, this pose for quite a while and redoing it and redrawing it several times, uh, I think I've come to the conclusion that um, I need some photo reference. So I went in there, uh, took a few photos where I posed, uh, and then kind of moved the leg over and just tweaked it a little bit. And now what I'm doing is I'm sketching over my own photo reference. Um, 
And what this helps me achieve is just to get the overall proportions down. Uh, I already had the pose, I already had the stretch, I already had the, uh, the motion and the intent. What I was missing is some more realistic kind of proportions. Uh, it's always that battle between, you know, do you want a really pushed, a really fantastical uh, illustration that's squishing and squashing and stretching, or do you want a more uh, <clears throat> realistic proportions in anatomy? And I, this is a fantasy piece of art. Here I'm laying down my future lights. I'm planning my lights. I'm going to want them to, uh, to hit the character and flood onto the mech. Um, but yeah, if, because this is more of a sci-fi kind of themed, um, it's not going to be so exaggerated. I don't want to go too cartoony with it. I want to keep it more realistic. So um, <clears throat> here I'm redoing the arms, I mean the hands. It's very apparent to me that uh, I have to make a decision here. Whether I'm going to make the fingers clutching onto the sword the way a normal uh, samurai or a normal human would do clutching a sword, uh, like in Kendo, or if I want to make it a little bit more uh, open-handed and, and fingers flaring out, like a little more elegant. That's a design choice I'm going to have to do, and I'm going to try different options uh, because I, I like the more elaborate, the more uh, fancy fingers, but I also don't want it to look like, like the sword's floating or there's no strong grasp on it. Um, <clears throat> so I'll come back to that later. Right now I'm working out um, the basic posing. I'm working on a cannon on the left side using photo reference uh, just to build up the images, uh, just to build up the rough. Gives me an idea of what's going to be there. Um, I don't know if I'm going to end up sticking with this or not at this point. This is really just to help me uh, almost like brainstorm and get a quick little preview of what's to come. So the way I see this is it's almost like I'm the client and I am at the same time the client and the artist. I'm producing artwork to show to the client and then the client, you know, if you don't give them enough content, they, they don't have much to work with. So um, you, need to give, you need to give them something. So putting this down is almost like putting grit. It's like putting texture on your canvas. Uh, and. Uh, that's what I'm doing right now. I'm allowing myself to see, do I like these mechanical parts? How's the weight? How's the color? How's the tone? Uh, does it sit well? Am I going to keep the mech white? Am I going to make him a different color? And in terms of contrast, how do the mechanical parts fit uh, in the design, like a cohesively or clunky? Uh, on the left there, you, you can see some previous paintings, uh, some really, really quick sketches. and. Uh, I had done previously and I'm going to try and match some of the colors because I like some of the colors in there and the, the balance between you know light, color, shadow, texture. Um, I'm working out the, the angles here. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to use this for actual cuts or if I'm just going to use it to indicate uh, different plane changes. At this point it doesn't really matter. At this point in the initial, very initial painting, what's important is to just Put it down. It doesn't matter if it's good or bad. Don't judge it. Just throw it all down and judge it later. Uh, the background needs to extend a little further high because uh, as you can see between his legs, it's, you can't tell the difference. So by dropping a darker tone there, it really helps push out the legs. Uh, but I do want a gradient to put depth, to show depth. So I, I had a gradient going lighter towards the, the top. Um, let's see. Yeah, just playing with different uh, levels and settings for the ornamental stuff. Trying to bring back some of the uh, armor on top. Because I, I work with parenting layers, it's very easy to do this. Uh, if you look on the right, there's the mech layer, and then there's uh, a second layer on top, which is all the gears and stuff. And that gear can be, you know, edited separately and all that. So here I'm trying different textures to go into the... Uh, the line and onto the white metal planes. And I'm experimenting, do I want this to be a warm, a cool um, kind of top? And what I'm figuring out is that it's not, I don't want to change it too much. The original idea is good, and this is a problem I, I sometimes do. I During experimentation, it's good to let yourself be free and not limit. 
Uh, but you also have to keep an eye on not pushing so far out of your original intent that it ends up being a completely different piece or a completely different product that you that you don't really want. You know, sometimes you can have ac happy accidents, but the the flip side of that is that you can also uh, allow yourself to stray off too far and then just lose the original intent. So here, dropping in quick cast shadow, uh, quick shadow, core shadow, uh, just to differentiate planes and for the readability, because at this point everything kind of reads together. Um, white on white, <laughs> this is not working very well as a general rule, but I'm not worried about that because every I can always go back here, darken the background, or punch up the foreground. Like that's not a problem. Right now, what I'm looking for is uh, it's just to get my ideas down, and I'll deal with it later. I, I think if a lot of this process adds. Jot it down and fix it later. Working with these uh, photo references and uh, so I'll do a, a quick little sketch, like a brushy sketch, and then I'll come back in and add photos in it. And it's almost like it's it's a kind of like a mix of photo bashing and, uh, and and having maintaining some of your original sketch in there. So I had wings off a previous design that I had done in that thumbnail uh, a long time ago, or a couple weeks ago, and I want to here I'm trying I want to see if that would look good in this image uh, because I kind of like the little cannons or, or little exhaust pipes that he had on the back or battery cells whatever those are going to be uh, I like how they were sticking so by putting the wings I'm negating those I'm going to have to to lose them so. At this point, I know I know I'm going to have to make a decision because they can't just stay the way they are right now, uh, intersecting into one another. Now the background is bugging me; it's all monochromatic. I want to get a second color, so I'm pushing in a cold warm kind of palette, and I'm experimenting with the lightness and darkness of the background, especially especially in the blue area. Uh, the balance is extremely delicate because I want the eye to come in through the top where the ninja sword is and follow down towards the, the cockpit of the plane mech. Um, so what I need is I need a light top, dark bottom as an overall image. There Photoshop just crashed and this happens sometimes so you know just kind of I think the new Photoshop tends to save recovery files so that's kind of nice. Uh, but the new Photoshop CC has been having a lot of bugging issues, like the color blending option when you hold shift plus and minus to switch through your blending modes, it doesn't work for me. Like I have to keep clicking on the arrow and clicking on the brush and trying different layers. And uh, you, on the previous versions, you would just hit the V for arrow key and then shift plus or minus for blending modes. Uh, I hope they fix that. Uh, it's a detail, but it really slows me down and pulls me out of the creative uh, flowing, the creative flow. So here, okay, I'm, I want some cannons, uh, and I want some heavy artillery on this guy. So I'm probably going to have like shoulder, uh, either uh, missiles or, or guns or something. So I'm dropping in the base for these into the, the arms. Um, like if you look through the hands, I dropped in a really, really grungy texture from a uh, tractor that I had found at Whole Foods, <laughs> of all places. But I really like the texture, the rusty texture on it. So I put those in, makes it look heavy, beefy, and kind of scary because it's not a smooth surface. So subconsciously, the human brain is kind of stay away from that. You know, don't touch it. You might cut yourself. So I think. I'm, I'm happy with the way that looks scary. I've blurred out the, the arm that's behind the character and uh, that's another thing too, the blurriness. I want this to be a painterly feel and in motion and very much in the moment. So when you're in the moment, you don't have time to notice all the background details. You don't have time to notice every little intricate details. So I want to give an impression, a loose impression of the... It, it's almost like an impressionistic painting and then with a, with a stronger focal point. That's something I learned from uh, Zhao Ming Wu is an incredible painter, traditional oil painter. I think he studied, I think he's from China and studied at the, the academy over there and, and now he's teaching in LA and 
if I if I ever live there, I'm gonna go take classes with him. Uh, I took a workshop with him in in Austin. It was it was really awesome. Um, but anyways, what he's teaching is that you know you you want to keep everything kind of blurry or vague or not hard at you want to keep everything soft edged so that your focal points really really pop and this is with oil painting and uh, what he does just a side side note here on oil painting what he does for the for the extreme focal points the extreme whites uh, with oils it's difficult to uh, to paint over like if you've done a mid-tone and you want to bring it all the way to a highlight and make it like a glowing white good luck it's it's not going to happen because it, it picks up the, the lower colors so much so what he does is it's very smart in his blocking stage he uses uh he'll just take that focal area like let's say the top of the shoulder if that's the focal area he'll just paint that as a flat white shape period so that later on when he comes back he can go darker very very easily but he can't really go lighter uh, so what that does it's almost like watercolor preserving your whites but it's the same idea but with oil colors so anyways, back to this digital painting, because this is about digital painting. Um, what I'm doing here is I'm bouncing some, uh, some bounce light. I like the image on the top left there um, of the mech and how he, he's, in, he's set in the desert, so the, the light is extremely strong and bouncing off the, the orangey sand floor and bouncing right back at him. So it's giving that really nice freshness look to it. Um, so I wanted to get a little bit of that in, in the ship, so I, I put it there. I played with it a little bit, and uh, now that I'm recording this audio file, in retrospect, I, I realize I forgot to go back in there and clean that up. I left that as uh, extremely temp, and it doesn't look very good. Um, I should have cleaned it. Oh well. Um, now I'm bringing in my line work from my original, because my original little cleanup sketch, because I want to just get the eyes in there. So at this point, sometimes I just block in stuff. And don't even worry about color, tone, shape. It's really just making a selection. Afterwards, I'll adjust the color, tone, shape. It's just so much faster to work this way for some things. Uh, whatever enables your brain to move forward unrestricted is, is the way to go. So while I'm painting these, I'm constantly thinking, like, I'll think, how can I get bounce light on the edge here? So I'll, I'll just pull out a brush, do it, erase you know, the areas I don't want, or do like a smooth gradation and a hard edge. I'm constantly thinking uh, receiving shadows and uh, hard textures. All right, sorry about that, guys. I kind of got kicked out of a room. I'm uh, doing this recording during my lunch break, and I did not know the room was reserved for <laughs> some other meeting, but it doesn't matter. Anyways, now I'm in another room. Hopefully, I don't get kicked out before the end of this recording. Uh, where were we? Okay, so um, what I'm doing here is... Uh, taking some elements from the original little thumbnail and trying to bring them back in. Uh, some of these photos are pictures that I've taken at the uh, Aviation Museum, Flight of uh, Frontiers of Flight Museum in Dallas. They have uh, the Apollo 7, I believe. They have a bunch of jets. Uh, really good photo reference. Uh, it's kind of like the advice that Scott Robertson gives on his uh, classes is to, to go out and get your own photo reference, build your own photo library, uh, get your own uh, folders full of metals and plain parts and bolts and because then you don't have the same photo reference that everyone else has from you know Google searches where if you write bolt you know a lot of people a lot of the results will be similar um, and then the second thing is you won't have to uh, deal with uh, images being recognizable um, from other people's sources. So here is an example of using an internet picture. I took this, this one piece of a golf concept uh, object to put onto the sword and I'm not too worried about using an internet picture there because you, it, there will be nothing recognizable from it by the end of it. Um, here I'm just placing what I think is tonally and color why is the right stuff in the character just to get some some grit? Um, I'm using an image from an old concept. This is a Japanese kamisori. It's a uh, it's a Japanese straight razor shaving that I use for shaving every week, and it's uh, it's ex it's made of extremely hard steel, and it's made from a uh, a family called Iwazaki, and uh, they were making samurai swords. Uh, 
during the samurai era, and when that ended, they, they turned to straight razors because, uh, well, you know, change in policy. So, uh, but what they're doing is an extremely good quality. It's, it's, they're so beautiful. They're priceless uh, little jewels and amazing little engineering feats. Um, the edge on them are really hard because it's carbon. So anyways, I want to bring some of that Japanese metallurgy feel and, and knowledge to this piece. And then the other thing is the angle of the blade is not matching what it... I want it to match what an original sword would be, so that's why I'm pulling an image from the internet. And this is not just a normal katana that you pull out. Uh, it's one of those, like, uh, wooden... I, I don't know what they're called, but they're like... Uh, it's wood on wood, and it's like a straight... Uh, sword it doesn't have like that cusp at, at the handle that, that protects your your hand so uh, i think the curvature is slightly different as well so i went in and corrected that now i'm doing some more photo bashing from previous concepts um, and the way this works is uh all of this is really just temp if none of this is really like put in there to be final or painted as is all of this is is put in there to help me build the image up from here so I'm getting somewhere with the sword, I'm working on the helmet, trying to put different pieces in, I want to get a little bit of texture on that sword blade, uh, but I want it to gradate and blow out because I just want that part to be impactful. Um, sometimes I'll just paint it in, like, like I'll just paint a shape and paint and then slide in an image, or sometimes I'll just manually paint stuff. It really depends on how rushed, how much time I have on a certain image. In this case, I'm producing this image uh, with a, with the idea that there's a there's a quick deadline, whether that's real or not. Um, I have a, a speech at UTD uh, this Friday, so I kind of wanted to give them something more than just a, a talk. So that's why I'm recording this. I wanted to. Uh, to show them visuals as I was talking. So maybe that's why I felt so rushed to finish this. Uh, uh, I didn't actually put that into concrete words until now, but that's probably what happened. Um, here I'm using different parts, but as you can see, I like certain elements, but I, I, they're not in the right spot, so I move them around. I use a lot of stamp tool, a lot of the smudge tool. Um, here I'm putting cloth just to see the color. And the texture is wrong, the tone's wrong, like a lot of stuff is wrong, but what that gives me is it gives me a quick idea. Like here I put a dark cloth and I realize it doesn't work. I need a lighter cloth. Um, so that, that's, that's the advantage of working with photo like this, is that you put them in and you right away know if it's good or bad. You don't have any work to do up front. You, uh, you get to judge it right away. You can always work on top, which is really easy um, to go in there and just render stuff. Uh, but the goal of this stage of the painting is to just see it. I want to see the painting as quickly as possible before I get in there and render stuff. And believe me, I've done it so many times where I've rendered stuff. I've gone in there and designed every little element of the, of the vehicle, of a character, just to realize that the overall image isn't really working. And at the end of the day, it doesn't excite me. And I'm kind of bored with it and kind of fed up. And the whole painting process is not exciting. It's just kind of laborious and it's it's just killing my inspiration so uh, so now I think as a rule one of my rules is don't don't go in there and render before the image works make the image work first and then if it's good allow yourself to go in and clean up stuff and render um, <laughs> I put in little, little boots um, I like the way that blue is contrasting with the gray. For some reason, it kind of reminds me of some sort of G.I. Joe, but I, I don't know where it's from. There's something in my memory from childhood. I don't know what it is, but uh, it's that, those, that color theme. I'd have to look that up. I haven't looked up G.I. Joe since I was like 10 years old. Uh, let's see. Oh yeah, so the sword. I had placed in my canvas story sword as a, as a temporary color placement. Now I'm trying more modern metals and uh, smudging. You see, if you use a smudge tool, like a square chalk brush at 99% opacity, you can move stuff around the same way you can translate stuff. 
Um, that's a trick I learned from, from Sparth, uh, Nicolas Bouvier, at the Steambot workshop in Louisiana, New Orleans, which was amazing. Holy crap, if you have a chance to learn from Sparth, uh, do it. He's, he's, he's freaking amazing. All right, now the hand. The hand is a problem. It's been a problem from the start. It's been bugging me. I should have taken the time to uh, figure out the intricacies of the pose while I was posing. So that's a picture of me over there with a with a pain over leg and uh, I like that hand position when I was posing but now it, it's kind of problematic for me because I I can hear people saying right away well why you know that's not how you hold the sword like the the, the hands not fully clenched and like you can allow yourself to have like those index and major finger pull out like on the right hand uh, because you're only pushing with the back hand and for that action of slicing downward but the other hand doesn't have to have the flourishes of the pinky being up and the uh, index being at a different curvature than the, the middle fingers either ways uh, I know it might be a problem so I'm reworking the hands here quite a little bit and I'm looking at uh, I'm looking at my motorcycle gloves, or actually at this point I'm just sketching gloves and um, later on I'll realize they remind me of my motorcycle gloves and I'm going to use them as reference later on to, to put a little bit of red uh, uh, key color on there. Here I'm just dropping in some lights real quick, extremely, you know, roughly just to get uh, readability. At this point I'm working on readability. I feel like all the shapes are blending and it's killing me and I need to darken the forearms, I need to darken the stuff that's in the front and uh, lighten the stuff that's in the back and considering that this is a very heavily flooded light uh, scene I can allow myself to cheat a little bit and uh, f like flood the set with, with fog and, and fog his head behind the, the hand as if there was a very heavy fog with a strong light so you get depth which is you know, you wouldn't get that much, but it, it kind of looks cool. So it's a little bit theatrical, a little bit of a cheat, but whatever. So up until this point, everything's kind of just sketched in. But um, what I'm doing now is cleaning up my layers because I can't manage files. Like once it goes around 30, like anything above 12 layers for one object, like the character, it, it starts to get messy. So here I'm just smudging stuff and getting little cool little designs in it. And this approach is cool because it allows you to rough your painting in quickly and then go back in and do your, your little design uh, process. You, you can do design -y stuff in the areas that are in the focal point and you don't have to waste time doing it on stuff that's not going to be in the focal point. Uh, here I'm doing a blur because that's the whole idea. I, I don't want you to look everywhere at the whole character. like the, if you look at the leg for too long, it's going to take away from the image. I want your eye to go straight from sword slash coming down, boom, right onto the character. So there's going to be two main focal points, a primary and a secondary. Uh, the primary focal point is going to be his hands with a sword, and then the secondary is going to be the, the mech's head. Um, so here I'm working on depth. Uh, one of the depth things, one of the things that gives depth is uh, the scale, whether the scale of the particles that are going to be in front and on the back, uh, whether they're small or big, whether they're light or dark. So I want some light ones and some dark ones, and some really large ones and some really really small ones. That way, it makes your eye feel like there's a lot of depth. But the trick to making this work is that depending on where your, your camera's focused, if your camera's focused on the mid layers. Well, the particles would be in what we consider the overlay layers, uh, so that would be that would not be in sharp focus. So you need to you know unsharpen those. You need to blend them out. Um, but you can get a lot of depth with those kind of particle layers. Here I'm working like almost like just flat, like I flatten everything and I'm just going flat in and painting opaquely on top of this, just to get a clear read. And uh, the way I'm thinking of this is I, I need to make this pop. I'll go in and clean this up later if I need to. Like sometimes you don't really need to clean stuff. Sometimes it's fine the way it is. It depends on if it's in the focal point and if you're if if you're really if you're trying to show something. So here you see the back thr thruster is a little too uh, too hard edged. So I blurred it, made it softer. Um, if my camera lens is focused on the 
the nose of the jet, the back end of the jet will definitely not be in focus. Uh, like if you look at your hand, everything behind your hand is blurred. Everything in the background in the environment. Uh, so here I'm adding a little texture from, I actually got this from the Apollo 7, uh, as you can see on the bottom left. And I think some of the color, I mean I've always, I love the colors where you've got like that, that turquoise, with the slightly warm off-white, uh, and you can you can even see it in the bottom left image of the Apollo Seven. The windows are blue, and then the, the ship is like a darker yellow. Um, those are very similar colors to my painting. Um, I did not take that as a as a color theme um, directly. Maybe subconsciously, I don't know. But uh, but I really love those colors. Those colors look so cool together. Um, Color harmony is a, is a really important step. Here I'm, I'm adding intricate little details of a jet. This is kind of, to be to be honest, it's a little bit kind of a cheat. You know, it's a little bit of a cheap trick because um, you're just dropping in pieces from other you know photographs and stuff and making them work in a way that looks believable. Um, What's fun here is to drop in stuff that comes from a real thing, but put them in a direction that makes absolutely no sense, or like in the current model of the ship. Like if you look at the jet where that's from, that would never be placed there, that would be placed somewhere else. But what, it doesn't matter because what's important is that how it, it, all that does in my painting is it adds, oh, Photoshop crashed again. Uh, all it does is it adds like a little believability and a, a sense of, oh, this is probably designed. You'll see on other paintings, I'll actually just go in and I'll, I'll go in and draw every single little design, like the little, here's the bolts, here's where it bends, here's the, the, the junction between the two metal sheets and that kind of thing. Uh, and that's great for design work and that's a, that's a whole different type of image. That's another image we'll cover later. Uh, but this image is not about design or it's not about like intricately showing the design of, of this stuff. Like even the character and the mechs, like if I were to make this into a game or a movie, I would definitely not leave this as a final. This would just be an initial inspirational painting to get the overall feel, the overall mood, and the overall, like, it's, just, it's a feeling, it's a feel kind of painting. Um, I would go back in and do all the design stuff step by step separately. Uh, but for the purpose of this kind of painting, this mood painting, this is good enough. It's just barely enough to communicate what you need with a very, very economic type of uh, detail. Uh, you have some design language, but not too much. So yeah, here what I'm doing is I'm, I'm doing little cuts. And uh, the cuts help, I, I don't know, they really help separate how, how objects are built in a, how they're manufactured is, is, is what it is. And uh, like here, Another topic is to how to make things efficiently. Like here I could have rendered every little knob and and painted them one by one, but what I'm doing is I'm, I'm working from a, using the, the tools in their most efficient way. Um, one of the issues often is to, uh, to try and, it's not an issue if you try to do like a traditional look in a digital painting or vice versa if you try to do a digital look in a traditional painting. However, what is beneficial is when you take advantage of the medium that you're in. So um, in oil painting, you might have a thick brush and you might get some texture out of that. Well, use that. Uh, in this case, we're on, on the computer. Um, we have stuff like this. Uh, this trick I'm using right now is color balance. Uh, Scott Robertson talks about this, where he'll take a grayscale car or he'll, he'll drop one color like orange, and then in the lights he'll take a warmer light and in the shadows he'll do cooler, uh, or vice versa. But what's good about that is it allows you to control uh, the, the, the highlights, the midtones, and the shadows. Um, and in this case I'm applying it differently, separate ones to the character, the mech, and the background, because because uh, it gives me that kind of control. I, here I'm like pushing back some of the shapes of the mech by just painting opaquely on top and pushing it backwards like that. Um, oh, I'm double checking my energy flow. Is my flow working? 
by putting that little thumbnail on the side, it's just to, just to uh, double check kind of thing. Uh, working on these guns, so I always intended it to be guns. I thought it was going to be like a machine gun type of thing with four little cylinders, but instead I'm deciding to do more like a toaster, like double slot thing. And I want this to look like it's in motion, so I, I don't want to track it too perfectly. I want it to have a little bit of an offset. I'm going back in, popping in some lights and the eyes. Uh, I want to make it warm, but I don't want it to compete. Uh, you know, I don't want it to be so warm that it kills the image, uh, the, the color harmony. So balance is very important. Now the image is starting to look pretty close to presentable and close to finished for an inspiration's uh, level of polish we're going to get. Originally I wanted to go in there and clean up all the knees and all do the metal intricate things. And the more I look at this, the more I'm, I'm thinking, well, this is not about the design at this stage. This is this image is an inspiration. So I'm really going to let that slide in this one. And if I want to take this and if I, I want to use these designs later on, I'll go in there and uh, design them as a separate thing. So for now, I'm just doing just enough. Uh, here's some clarification on the, on the hands, uh, the gloves. This is the part where I'm looking at my gloves, my Dionysi. Uh, awesome freaking gloves and they have like metal plates on the top uh, also this is a remnant of the samurai uh, armor we went to the samurai exhibit uh, here in Fort Worth uh, about a week or two ago and we, we studied like all the different little armor on the samurai and that stuff is amazing you should see like the uh, the intricate little like details and the amount of cloth and the amount of, of, of different materials, gold plates, metal plates. Can you believe those helmets are actually made of cast iron? Like my teapot is made of cast iron and that's heavy. I can't imagine wearing a whole armor made of that. And, uh, and then it's covered with leather and it's covered with, uh, it's tied together with materials. So anyways, the, the gloves uh, are a mixture of, of like a motorcycle glove and a samurai type of thing. And uh, I think if I were to push this image into a, a more like, like, if it was a marketing piece for, for a magazine cover, I would go in there and design every little thing. Like, I would want the every little part of the, the armor on the character to look more, uh, to make more sense, you know. I, want, I would want it to be more uh, uh, thought out. Um, so here what I'm doing is I'm balancing, uh, making things pop. These are like final little kind of highlights and pops and glows and polish and this is I just call it like the bling stage it's blinging out you know but I don't want to do too much I just want just enough for it to be tasteful like I don't want spinning rims you know I want like <laughs> you want you want the car looks good you just don't want it to look stupid so you gotta be you gotta dose your your amount of glows and your amount of rim lights and uh, you can achieve similar things by putting the lights in the characters or in the shape rather than on the rim so don't rely too much on rim lighting uh, some rim is okay some rim is good but just be very well weighted with it yeah here i don't even know what i'm going to do with that glow but i want to do like a jj abrams kind of like oh here's a little lens flare super corny but you know why not it's it's a sci-fi piece, go ahead and have fun. So here's some glowy, as if he's pulling back and it's trailing a little bit of light like Akira's motorcycles. Uh, and I want to just, I, for me, this is going overboard. Like I'm, I'm really tr pushing this overboard into the glows and, and specs, but I want it to be one of those moments like shing, and it's like it's about to cut, you know? So uh, a rust, okay, so what I'm doing here is I'm pulling a rust and wear and tear layer that I've done on another jet. And uh, the jet image I'm going to post later on. Uh, however, I don't have the, uh, the design. Uh, I didn't record that one. I should have. But uh, I would have saved time doing, avoiding mistakes. But anyways, uh, the rust layer on this one is uh, just to be, again, to save time, I'm using another piece's uh, assets. And notice how I'm only putting it in the focal points. I'm not spending time putting that in areas that you won't see. Um, now I'm working on the legs. The legs were bothering me because I wanted to show at least a little bit of, like, just I wanted to hint at the, at the idea that there was a reverse, uh, like the mechanical 
part of that. How it, it's like a reversed legs, like you have on, on a lot of uh, animals, like I think like the T-Rex, that kind of thing. But, uh, and making it fit tonally, uh, color-wise, saturation. I wanted to, you know, look a little like a different material, but not so far off that it doesn't fit there. It's also being affected by the same lights and has to fit in the environment. So there you go. I think this is my final painting. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, feel free to uh, post below or share or whatever. This is the first video and uh, I'm probably going to learn a lot in the next ones and how to do videos and get the sound working and all that. But uh, for now, this is the first one. Enjoy it. This was fun. Thank you.